Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike and I got my line mate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over some Blackhawks news. We've got a lot of NHL news today. Uh, Patrick Waugh is the new is the new head coach for the New York Islanders. Apparently, after the Islanders lost to the Blackhawks the other day, they fired their coach. I guess that's the... Don't lose <laughs> to the Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose to the yeah. Hawks. That's the the backbreaker right there. So uh, Hawks uh, beat the Islanders 4-3 to three in overtime. They were winning 3-1 to one at one point, almost gave it away. Um, but man, this team, you know, they are... I'll be honest with you, man. It seems like Jason Dickinson, in a way, has kind of rallied this team in a way where it's like, look... Connor's down. We have to do what we need to do to, to try to win some games here. And I think that he's doing a, a really good job of that. Um, and Seth Jones has come back and scored his first goal the other day. Matt, do you think that the Blackhawks are, you know, obviously we're not looking, we're not even looking to sniff the playoffs this year. Do you think that Davidson is still analyzing what we have, like like on the team, like what pieces we have? Is he surprised at who's kind of stepped up? Yeah, I think it's a big kind of trial process here. And um, like you said, Dickinson has been a surprise. Uh, we, we knew he had some good scoring touches last year, but this year he's got, I believe he's at 15, right? I think he just hit yeah. 15. And he got his extension two years around... Four-ish, I believe, which is very fair. Yeah. Very fair. If he, uh, I, I thought he'd be a, a big, you know, all eyes would be on him at the uh, trade deadline. Guy who could score goals, very cheap contract, good leader. I mean, he's wearing an A with the Blackhawks, yeah. I'm sure. He's loving that. I, I, know, I know Darren Peng raves about him wearing the A. He's so deserving of it. And that's good to see another leader that we need. Uh, to be honest, man, since Bedard's been hurt, Kershev has really stood out to me. Like he yeah. he is making some great passes. He's very he seems better on his skates. Like he he's moving great. Nice cuts, dig, uh just deking some guys and you know and I, I that overtime game, I uh the one before the Islanders, he was on the ice almost the whole time. And he looked fantastic. The shootout game. Uh I believe I forget who we played, but um Kershev was very noticeable. The last three games, he's been very good. And I, I, I found it funny, you know, at the beginning of the year, he went to arbitration, and I think they gave him $2 million. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? You gave this kid $2 million? And you know what? <laughs> I, I, I could see him jumping now to about yeah. at least four. Like, they're handing money out like crazy in the Blackhawks. <laughs> but uh, They got money to spend. I, this might be a guy that might survive the rebuild, I think. And I didn't mm. think I'd say that, but the way he's Me playing, either. he looks like he's one of the guys that are, he's going to make it. And another guy that's been very, very good to me is Blackwell. This guy's yeah. killing penalties. He, he's looking like a, like a Froelich Kruger combination we had in 2013. Right. This guy is just all over the place, stealing pucks, killing penalties, creating scoring chances. He's been very good. Ironic that you mentioned that because I've been I've been noticing him essentially playing this this third liner um been playing great defense yeah. you know t- type of a guy and and it it seems like we have a lot of guys who are stepping up into roles and it's like you know what you might be something that we could that we can use here you know yeah. you mentioned Kurashev and you know for the first couple years he was with the Hawks I'm like you know what this kid has a lot of uh, potential, you know, and he just isn't living up to it. And then this year they put him on the line with Bedard and it's like, okay, well, if, if there's, if this guy can't get going with this kid, nobody can. Right. Yeah. So, um, but it seems, and he's been playing on and off well with Bedard, but it seems like with Bedard going down, like you said, he has been more noticeable, it seems. And I don't know if it, that's opened up his game in a way, if like, hey, we have nobody else to turn to and, you know, he's putting, you know, the S on his chest or something like that, or, or at least trying to. But something that I'm very surprised with, man, is is Lucas Reichel not taking this opportunity by the horns and trying to run away with it. I don't think they're helping him, though. I don't yeah, think so either. He, yeah, he's not <laughs> with his limited time and fourteen. Oh, he had fifteen minutes the other day. Surrounding guy. cast, he's not really. If anything, oh wait, no, it was eleven minutes, fifteen shifts. That was the second lowest on yeah, the squad. That's not enough. 
especially when you're when you're trying to see what this kid's made of. He's got to be in every situation at this point. Yeah, power play one. I'm mean, I'm not saying a penalty kill, but you you want him on top line, top six minutes, and he's not getting it. Right. So uh, very very it's it's very weird how they're how they're yeah. taking that because like you said I, when too. he was in Rockford, he I'm not saying he's too good for the AHL, but he he was very very good there where he didn't look like it looked like he was playing you know over the competition and that could be good at times and it could be bad. You, you, this is the year we we wanted to see how he can handle elite players now. And he's just not getting that opportunity. Yeah, I and look at I'm looking at the opportunity that we've given Kurashev. To be honest with you, what the time that we've given Kurashev is actually similar to what New York has given to Lafreniere. Yeah. So, yeah, he's had a great season this year. Very good. Is 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 Lucas Reichel going to get that four year time to? play in the NHL to see where he's at because I can see them getting really impatient with uh with him. I don't know what you know for some reason man I'm getting this um you know how Q was with young players with uh with the Le- with Letty I'm getting this Richardson w- with Reichel that he's very sure impatient with him. Yeah, you I, know? I that was one of the stupidest moves in Hawks history getting rid of a uh, a young stud in Nick Letty, who's still playing. You know, he's not learning. Not as good. He's still learning at the time. Not as good, but yeah, very good two-way defenseman, which is what yeah. the defenseman position is pretty much all about now. If you if you don't have any offensive upside, pretty much teams aren't going to look at you now. Yeah, which is really odd, man, because it's there are teams that are in desperate need of some defense, but how many? How many all all around defensive defensemen do we have out there? I, you can't really think of. Uh, I mean, I can't even. It's hard. I if yeah. The Jarmelson was the last guy. You know, honestly, this yeah. is the the, the guy yeah. that you want on your team. I, you, I like. I told anybody, I'll take, I'll take six of them. Six Jarmelsons over one Eric Carlson, one Chris Letang, one. I'd even take over one uh, Hetman. I'd, I'd rather have six Jarmelsons where I know I'm going to get a guy who's not afraid to block a shot, who could skate the puck up to the red line and dump it in because that's all he's good for on the offense. I, that's it. I think Hedman's. I think Hedman's the exception. I don't think Hedman can do what Jarmelson can do in his own zone. No, Hedman was so good though at hounding pucks and getting it up to the forwards and even skating it himself if he wanted to. Another Swedish guy, big guy, but I don't. They're just two different players, and they yeah. they just don't they don't really look for guys like that anymore. It's a, it's a shame, and I, I keep yeah. hearing you know Connor Murphy's like that. No, he's not. He's Connor not like Murphy, that at all. That guy gets lost all the time. He's always chasing guys, and you know he'll skate back to the slot, and there's a guy literally waiting for a one timer pass that gets through him. I just I I don't. Maybe it's the system he's in. I, I don't know, but I just never been hyped on this guy ever. Ever ever since the trade with Jarmelson. He came from Phoenix and it just I think he was actually drafted by the Senators too, and it just not just never worked out. You know, with Seth Jones, a lot of people still talk about his contract and it's obviously not a problem now, but since we're talking about defensemen and we're talking about defensive ability, do you think that with Seth Jones, his age is, you know, he's going to be getting older. Do you think that he should be concentrating on his defensive um, responsibilities more now that he's getting older and try to um, maybe improve the defense a little bit? I think all defensemen should pride themselves on playing in their own end before jumping in the O. That's just sure. that's how all of them should have the mentality. But now, it, like like I said, it's just if you're not getting a bunch of assists, some goals here and there, or joining the rush, you're not a good defenseman, which is crazy. Like and I like honestly, dude, the Norris Trophy's a joke to me. If you got guys like Eric Carlson winning, yeah, he had a hundred points. Congratulations, you're still a minus player terrible in your own zone i know he's flipped it around this year but he's playing with a very good defensive team i'm sure he's losing a lot of minutes too with um uh chris letang 
being kind of the same role type of guy with the Penguins. But jumping back to Jones, um, I thought he was a really good defenseman in his later years with Nashville, and then they traded him. And he was good early with the, with the Jackets. And I think Torts had a lot to do with that, the way that they played. And I think they wanted him to slowly, you know, take over, you know, be that rushing defenseman. And uh, he had one good year, I, I want to say, with the Breadman and Zach Wierenski, all those guys, uh, Pierre Mark. Luke Dubois, whatever the hell his name is, but <laughs> the year that the Jackets really surprised everybody, where Sergei Bobrovsky was phenomenal, Vesna caliber. Right. But since then, he's kind of slowly declined, and I I like Seth Jones, and I think he's a good defenseman, not not a more of an offensive minded guy. Not really since he's been with the Hawks. The Hawks has just been terrible. I like they to see him been. with a solid partner. Where this guy's going to be like, hey, do your thing. I'm going to do my thing in my own zone. Keith and Siebes complement each other. He's never had that guy to really kind of cover for him while he's doing his thing. And I don't think we've seen the real Seth Jones yet that we signed. So I, I don't think the contract will hurt if the cap keeps going up and up and up. It's I think he's, what, at 9.5, 9.6, whatever. Yeah. I mean, eventually, maybe at the end of his his cup his years, it might hurt a little bit, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. Right now, we got what forty forty million cap space. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's thirty five or forty million. <laughs> thing is, you you want to win one cup with your star when he's on his entry level. That would be yeah. ideal. On say yeah. Connor's third year, let's go for it. But I, I just don't know if the Hawks are there. I and I really like their defensive prospects coming up. Hey, yeah, Nolan I Allen, do too. Del Mastro. I, I, I still consider Korczynski a pro, uh, a prospect. He, he's got a, he, he needs a good partner too. Uh, there's a ton of good guys that are coming up, and I think we're gonna be drafting even better this season. We got two first round picks again. I think. Tampa's yeah. other one, I believe. Might have a top three. So, yeah, we most likely will have a top three, which is it's going to be good. But I think the Hawks really need to look at goaltending, too, because I don't think Soderblom is the guy. I mean, it. like I said, he doesn't have a team yet. mrazic has been great. This guy should be traded. Not because I want him to leave, but he's so good, a team should. They should be calling at least for this guy. I've been hearing rumors that Trevor Zegris is not, and what I mean by I'm hearing rumors is that on the internet I'm looking at people talk. It's not like I've got insiders in my yeah, head. I heard this but, too. Oh, yeah, but that Trevor Zegris is not happy in, in Anaheim right now. I think he's he's injured. He has a broken ankle, and um, they, there's a possibility that he could be the odd man out there for some odd reason. Well, I wouldn't say for some odd reason. I would say that I think that he's very marketable. So he's kind of, when you think of the Ducks, you think of Trevor Zegers a lot. And you don't necessarily think of Troy Terry, even though Troy Terry's a good player. Um, do you, th- I, I, I mentioned this to you last week, but I was wondering if maybe you got a, you know, a minute to kind of think about it. Do you think that Zegers would fit in on a team with Connor Bedard and, and Lucas Reichel? Uh, or do you think we need more of like a power forward type of guy? Well, I'll start off by saying that I think he is the odd man out in Anaheim just because of Crazy. Mason McTavish. This yeah. guy's got 13 goals, 15 assists. He's a very good player for these guys. I think he'll, he'll be the face. And uh, I just, you know, I, I don't think that Zegers is, he's been hyped a lot. And he, yeah, cool, you're a good stick handler. Very phenomenal stick handler. Great creative player. But in the end, you, you got to win. You got to put up numbers. And I think he had one good season with the Ducks, right? Last year was probably last year. Yeah, I don't know if he's the type of player that. Well, I'm sure he would benefit playing with Bedard, and Bedard would benefit playing with him. But I think we need the type of player like a Matthew Barzell, a pass first mentality guy. I don't know if Zegers is a pass first guy. I think I don't watch him enough to say it. I, I mean. 
his assists are higher than the goals, obviously. So maybe, but I, I think that a more established elite type of playmaker comes available. I think you got to go for it for Connor. Uh, Matthew Barzell is, I think he's uh, over 30 assists this year. And uh, I've always been a huge fan. And the, the poor guy, he's playing on a team that just can't score goals. And they, they gave yeah. him. Unless he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, they gave him Bo Horvat, which is, I'm sure, helping, but it's still not enough when you, you, you're you a one line team pretty much. And then you got a bunch of grinders and you got an elite goalie back there. Pretty much, you're asking him to keep it down to one every game for a chance to win. That's, yeah. that's a lot to ask your goalie. So, I mean, if the Hawks. You know, made an offer for Zegers, and they accept it. I, I mean, I wouldn't be mad, but I'm I'm just not a crazy fan of the uh, the new age type of fan, like where they just want to see. Like my son, he he likes stick handling. They, he likes to shoot out stuff, uh, and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, that's cool, but it's not not really part of the game. You don't see it in a 60 minute game. Very rarely right. you do. Yeah, Zegers, I give him like I give him credit. He he's got balls to try that shit. It's hard yeah. to do in a game. And, and you know, Connor did his Michigan goal, and Seagrass ended up doing it the same They're night. Doing the same day. Same, and his <laughs> might have been more impressive, which yeah. is really cool. But I, I just, I think he's got to learn. Know, I the, think Connor's was better. He like, he tipped it up onto the tip, like in stride, in which stride was, behind the net on a hard yeah. dumping, yeah, and yeah. kind of just, just perfect. And it was that's it, even incredible. better. It was against the Blues. And, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think Zegers, I, I like. I, I'm never going to be a fan. I just, I just think his he's got a good personality. I just think he comes across as, oh yeah, he's one of those kids that stick handles in the hallway with a golf ball and does his stuff before a game, and it's like okay, and the media loves that. All the the Snapchatters and TikTokers, oh look at this move, cool. He did a cool move, oh, but yeah, where did the do. puck go? It didn't go in the net, <laughs> you know. Right. I I think he's got to he's got to play the game a little. The way it should be played, not trying to do all this creative crap. Which I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but if he had the mentality like Kaner, where like, hey, let's let's go out and win a freaking cup. Let's go. Let's. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna pass you. You're gonna be my sniper. I'm gonna be your playmaker type of guy. I just think he he's just like loving the life. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm in the NHL. I'm on the Ducks. We're like. 10 and 70 this year who cares you know <laughs> but he might need a new environment you know yeah i mean he i i honestly think that just thinking about it that like being around somebody like connor who's constantly working on his game um what they're trying to build here he he'll see like wow like these guys are really working at it here you know what can i do to c- contribute you know i like to stick handle can he stick handle into the zone and, and set up bedard on a nice shot you know i think that he could be the playmaker that you know maybe that we're looking for and he's young too which is uh you know, which is obviously a big plus. Sixty-five points last year. Minus yeah, that's 24. not bad. On a, on a yeah. Okay, so if he's capable of scoring sixty-five points with Troy Terry. What can he do with Connor Bedard? That that that's true. And he, you know, he's probably PP number one, and you know, getting that extra time. But uh, yeah, I, at this point, if you you don't like your prospects coming up, and you want to make a deal. But I, I mean, I, I don't want to move a guy like Oliver Moore. You know, right. I don't want to. I want to see what these guys got first before Zegers, because I kind of know what I got with Zegers. Like a right. 50, 60 point guy, I think he's gonna, he'll be in his Ducks career. And, and But you never know. His numbers can skyrocket. And I, I know his buddy is Jack Hughes. I always wonder, like, hey, maybe he'll end up going to uh, Jersey and be that missing piece with Jack Hughes. But. Mm. These guys are so small, you know, they're, they're so, yeah, they are. they're not big guys and they're just, uh, real thin. They're not, they take hits, they get hurt. And, and I noticed that with Hughes this year, even Bedard, but he's 18, but right. Hughes gets hit, man. I feel like his shoulder, he's hurt a hard hit. You yeah. play physical against these guys. They're, they're almost, they're ghosts. So, I mean, I, I which is crazy because because Kaner has played in some wars, man, and it was ne- it was never an issue for him. You know, guys couldn't hit him. Well, yeah, guys, you, they, you, he's just so good at protecting the puck and himself. Yeah, and the best in yeah. the league was Nick Lindstrom. This guy had a, yeah. a you know a forward coming in on a dump a dump and chase 
Lindstrom would go get the puck, and it this guy's coming full speed, and he would almost just rub off the guy like grease. Like the yeah. guy would be like, "Oh, I'm trying to hit you, but I'm sliding off you." What's going? He was just so good at that, and I think Kaner yeah. was really good at that too. Yeah, he was, and I'm wondering if this is like a skill that these kids like j- they don't have, or yep. or maybe Hosa, because another one. I mean, I I would think that you know being so small, all of their careers, I'm sure all of them have been playing against older guys. Yep. You know that they would that they would need to figure this out. Yeah, watching um, Hughes try to hit somebody in that war the 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 Devils and the Blackhawks were playing in each other. I was just like, what's this kid thinking? He hurt himself. Just stay, hey, just week, stay week off week. of just just stay off the radar, man. Yeah, I, there's you know? no reason for him to play that kind of game. And when he started doing that, did you notice? I credit Luke Richardson. He, don't get pushed around by these guys. Go out there and do it. Do it back. And the Hawks played tough too. The yeah. best game of the season for me as a as a fan yeah, watching. Was, I love that every minute of it. I mean, I hated seeing Connor go down, but I love the response right. after from Folio right. and all those guys. Like, hey, you're not going to push us around because we're we're like a terrible rebuilding team. We're, and it ended up hurting the Devils and big time. They couldn't even play the next game. Oh, I mean, didn't th- I think they played? Uh, I think they played Vancouver the next game, and they just got ran over. And they lost their their main guy, you know. And this guy's for some reason he can't up. keep it together this year <laughs> with the injuries. Yeah, last year did he, did he score a hundred points? For, he had, uh, yeah, I think he did. I think he had ninety nine. Forty or goals, I think he points. had, right? Yeah, yeah, he was a forty goaler. So, but it's hard um, to get forty when you're on the IR, trying to be tough, yeah. and you're not tough. So, yeah. And going back to Zegers, man, I I just got a bad taste when he, they were playing against the the rebuilding Phoenix Coyotes. Remember that whole little episode? Oh, there was yeah. Uh, what, he guys said that were guys like stick. Troy Terry and him oh, could yeah. be hit. <laughs> what, what, what they did was they were running up the score, and um, you know they were scoring goals. I'm sure we we don't know half of it what was said, but you know they're saying stuff like, "Oh, there's another one," and they're probably the Phoenix guys can hear it, and it. The, the, I think it was Jay Beagle. I want. I, I'm pretty sure it was him. Something he had enough, and he he rocked the shit out of all these guys. He's like, no, nah, yeah. you're not going to embarrass us like this. We're we're pros too. We're not going to take that shit. And they they pretty much destroyed that that Ducks team. Troy Terry got his face just knocked in. Yeah, he did. And I remember Zegers going to the media. Oh, Troy Terry's elite. You can't be hitting him like that. Why not? Why yeah. not? You're going to run your mind. And, and I remember the uh, Phoenix uh, TV play by play guy was I think it was Tyson Nash, a former fourth line you know fighter. Goon, huh. he's like, hey, if you're gonna run around like that, show showboat and celebrate a five-one lead in the third. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go after you, and that's and I and I know I remember the Twitter universe was, oh, that's bullcrap. We, we got to get rid of these kind of players, and I, I don't think so. I think you got you got to play tough like that, and you yeah. got your reputation, and that's what I loved about the Hawks against Jersey. They did not take any shit, and they they. You know, they defended their teammate going down, their their star going down, their 18-year-old star going down, and very, very good response, and I, I'm very happy with how they're playing with Richardson. I do have some, you know, minor issues with him, but I think he's the guy. He's a good, very good coach. Unless John Cooper's available, he's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> So we know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 bucks instantly in bonus bets. Now, down, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code SHYTOMAHAWK. New customers bet just 5 bucks on the NHL, get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SHYTOMAHAWK. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Play responsibly. On behalf of Boothill Casino and Resort in Kansas, please 21 21- 
plus age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Now, Matt, I've been hitting some bets on... uh, on my 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 DK this past like couple weeks, man. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, they've been given some really good. Um, the the NFL, man, it's been it's been good, but um, it hasn't been good as like say like Ottawa is playing um, Boston. You know, like you can get really good odds on these on these games. So be sure to check out DraftKings Sportsbook, Matt. The Islanders hire Patrick Waugh as the next head coach. Make he makes his debut against Dallas Stars tonight. I have um I got Dallas in that game, but the odds actually improved for the Islanders after they <sighs> um, after they hire Insane. Patrick Waugh, yeah. which is funny. Yeah. You know, it's just how like the books kind of um move up and down with that stuff. Yeah, it was Dallas is minus one um. 115 and the Islanders are minus 105. So it's that new um, coach, took, that uh, new coach thing where the, where the guys come out flying, you know, like oh, we just got our former coach fired and we got to go out flying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 seems like it. Uh, I'm not sure who they play after this game, but tomorrow they've got the uh, the Bruins are playing the Jets. The Jets have been really good oh, this God, year, man. Stanley Cup favorites. Yeah, I, I think, think they're, they're like the top, top four in the league. Yep. But uh, anyways, what do you think about uh, Patrick Waugh and uh, and the Islanders? Very, very surprised to see that and hear about it. I'm like, wow, this is bold. You know what I mean? that You look at the record, they're in the hunt, dude. And yeah. uh, you lose to the Hawks in a pretty ugly game, I thought. I, they, they were bad. I mean, the team can't score. And... Uh, Big Lou, he he fired the fired the coach and must have had Patrick Waugh on his radar for a couple weeks now. I'm sure. I'm sure they were talking. Yeah. And um, I mean, I, I I'm happy. I I think Patrick Waugh was a great coach in the NHL with the Avalanche years ago, seven years ago. I think he won a Jack Adams too. I'm very surprised that he wasn't hired before. Uh, but I, I I like the move. I had like a new face coming in, not the same old, you know, Bruce Boudreaux and Elaine Vigneault's <laughs> taking over. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Wa fan. I think he is actually the best goalie of all time. You know, four Stanley Cups. The dude knows how to win. Two with Montreal, two with Colorado. Um, if you you look at his record as a junior coach with Quebec. 524 wins and 255 losses and 66 OT losses, which is phenomenal. Great record. Um, I mean, they made uh, he made the playoffs 12 years out of 13, which is uh, what you want, <laughs> you know, as a it's, it's very successful franchise. And uh, his last his last team was the Avalanche, and his. Record was 130 wins and 92 losses and won the Jack Adams in 2013-2014 season. So that that was the year we won the Cup, right? I believe it oh, was a lockout 20, year. No, no, that, that was, was next the year, year that we. Uh, okay. No, that was the year that we uh, we lost to the Kings in 14, the uh, Western gotcha. Conference Finals. So yeah, it was right. the year after. So I, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 a big fan of this move. I I like. I hope he can get these guys scoring goals. And that's their problem. They got a very elite goalie in Sorokin. And, you know, it's cool that Waz got that. I don't think he had that with the Avalanche. He's never had that number solid number one elite goalie. Now he's got it. So he's got to get these guys playing more aggressive. I think they're too very boring to watch, the Islanders. Very boring. Like Nashville of the East. Um, but if he can get these other guys scoring, like, Barzell and Horvat are. I think they're going to be an okay team. There's there's one point, one win out of a playoff spot, Ooh, second wild card. So hopefully this move kicks them in the ass, and hopefully Watt can get these guys on track and you know sneak in and probably face a very good Boston team. But look what happened last year with Boston. 
anything can yeah. happen in the playoffs. You just got to get there. So hopefully, Waz, new there. ideas and new new uh, style of play will help. You know, to get these guys out of a funk, you know, I don't know if even if they're just like, hey, what, what, what's our identity? You know, obviously they're a team. They've been known for a while, man, that they cannot score goals. Yep. I mean, it's been a few years. Um, even with Barzell, Tavares. Same with Tavares. Uh, yeah, they couldn't even, score. Yeah. I mean, Bar Barzal, he's, I think he was like practically missing all last year. I don't think he had a great year last year. Do you think that? They can't really address these issues maybe until free agency. Yeah, I think they're going to probably see some moves if, I mean, they're not a Stanley Cup contending team unless they get super, super hot. I just don't. I think Barzell and Horvath are the guys to keep, but you got a lot of older guys like uh, Peugeot, um, I forget his other name. They um, Matt Martin's a fourth line guy. They love him. Cal Clutterbuck, another fourth liner. The thing is, they got good goalie and very good defense. That Noah Dobson's having a great season. He's top three in defensive points. Uh, Pollock is another guy having a great season. Uh, good defenseman there. Probably one of the. Going back to your question, he's probably one of the best stay at home guys. And I think they locked him up for like eight years. But mm. uh, they they got to get rid of these you know older guys that are pretty much just twenty goal guys. They 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 should. Probably retool next year, you know. Complement that for try to get try to get another elite guy if you can. If if there's a guy available at the deadline, go for it. But you know, Lou Lou has always been this. Look at New Jersey; they never really had that top dog. You know, they had a very good goalie, very good sound defense, and you consider Patrick Eliash, you know, an elite guy. I think he was good. I don't think he was probably a, an elite type of guy. I think Barzell is probably better than him. So, yeah, they, they got to surround Barzell with more talent, I think. Bo Harvett was a good start last year, but they definitely need more help. Here's a, here's a good one for you. It looks like the Oilers are nearing signing uh, Corey Perry. It's official. Wow. They said that um, the Panthers, the Rangers, and the Lightning uh, were also interested in Perry. I mean, it's likely that Perry will take a significant pay cut with his next contract, with Cervalli projecting the veteran's next deal to end up somewhere near the league minimum of 750 k Brutal. Yeah, I mean, it makes you wonder, like, if these teams are... 4 million are, to 750 It just makes you wonder, like, uh, I wish the Hawks would say what happened. You know, like, was yeah. it really that big of a deal? Was it your conduct or the league's conduct? Because... Obviously, Bettman's letting him play. So, yeah, I mean, maybe it was a, a bad night, which every human has them. You know, they, you say yeah. something that you regret, you do something you regret, and you ask, you hopefully you get that forgiveness from people. Unfortunately, now, people just want, like, they want to bury you, <laughs> especially in the sports and political world. If you say something, you're, you're, you got to be careful whatever you say, because there's so many freaks yeah. out there. But yeah. I mean, I I thought Perry was great with the Hawks. I thought he was um, very a smart player to kind of you know put with a rebuilding team, young core. And I know it, you know, obviously the Hawks didn't like. I think the Hawks have a pretty much zero tolerance thing since the previous regime. So I mean, yeah. I wish him the best. And if he's with the Oilers, uh, you know, you're going to get a solid playoff guy, and and that's something that. You know, Edmonton's had issues with. Here's another one for you. The All Star captains have been named. Uh, the All Star game will be February 1st through 3rd on ESPN and ESPN Plus, Sportsnet, and TVA Sports. But uh, here are the captains Team Matthews is Austin Matthews and Justin Bieber. <laughs> Assistant captain is Morgan Riley. Uh, Team McDavid is Connor McDavid and Will Arnett. Assistant captain is Leon Dreisail. <laughs> okay, so it's the Oilers uh, versus so the Leafs. Got, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, we've got Team McKinnon. Uh, Let so me guess, that's Kale McCarr. No. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, <laughs> captains are Nathan McKinnon and Tate McRae. Uh, she's, um, I think she's a singer, and uh, assistant captain 
Oh yeah, my God. <laughs> so predictable. The NHL is so predictable. Oh. And uh, the last team, Team Hughes. Team Hughes. Uh, Two Hughes have, brothers. <laughs> we have co co-ca- captains, Jack and Quinn Hughes, and Michael Buble. So we're going to so, call Luke up and be the third A. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I'm considering his play this year, man. Luke has yeah. been playing. Um, he's been playing really well, man. Yeah, he'll be a rookie of the year candidate for sure. Yeah, I um, it, you know, if Bedard comes back and he's pissed off because he's missed so much time and goes on a tear, you know, I don't think that the, um anything will stop him from getting it. But to be honest with you, I think Luke Hughes, I mean, you can make a case for him for actually making the All Star game. Here's my question: Is Bedard officially out? Oh, he's going to the festivities. Okay. Um, I, I don't think that he can play in the game, but they might let him. I mean, who knows? They might let him do the... I have to look into it, man. But, I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't let him do any of the skills. Here's my question for you. If this happened in the 90s, you think Bedard would play his injury? Um, I think he would be there with a fishbowl. Yeah. Yeah, I think that... um... And to be honest with you, man... They're just playing it safe. Nothing wrong with that. They're they're playing it safe. You know, man, if you had had Connor McDavid, you know, it's like... Are we... do we really want this guy out there? You know, yeah. is that really what what we're trying to do here? Do we really want him out there? Um, they're trying to protect him. I think that would be cool if they let him go and participate in like the skills and not play in the game. But uh, I mean, there really isn't any hitting in the no. game. There's no know? hitting in the NHL anymore either. Connor just had a weird, weird coincidence. The the, the hitting well, is Randall very dumb. Wall. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to bring that up to you uh, r- really quickly. I'll I'll repost that well, well, on Twitter. But, but if Connor doesn't go, who's going to represent the Hawks? I don't Dickinson? know. He, he's I he's mean, he's got to be up there. If you send Connor Murphy, I'm burning every Blackhawks jersey I have. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, let me look into that. Let me look into that. Why don't you get into um, oh, God. um, the Oilers beat the Flames 3-1 to one for a Canadian record 13th straight victory. I won, uh, I won on that bet. I, I went with the Oilers on that. Oh, you got to go with the Oilers now for the rest of the year. These guys can't lose. It's amazing. Yeah. These guys were dead to rights. They were dead to rights, man. Yeah, and they weren't getting anything from their top dogs. Yeah, top dogs, goalies were getting sent down, and coaches fired. And man, uh, since the coaching change, two eight game winning streaks, uh, 25 and three, I want to say, which is right. phenomenal. Like, this team's hungry. And uh, Corey Perry, man, it was good playoff. Good playoff guy. I still think they're lacking some defense. Which, uh, hey, Connor Murphy's a good locker room guy if you need him. You take a fifth round pick, maybe. But, I mean, I I still would load up on defense and maybe even load up on another goalie. Hey, Peter Merez, yeah. it's a good choice, too. You know what, man? Um, so- something that we haven't really talked about was um, Matthew Barzell was. I don't know if you've known this, but he's known Bedard for a long time. Oh, I did not. He said that he said that uh, Bedard that they would let him come and play, and that at one point Bedard like he said his skates were actually too big, and he was still out there competing with him and and other guys, and then he goes, then one year, man, this kid came in. And he wasn't just skating with guys, but he was deking NHL defensemen <laughs> yeah. as a as a kid. Considering these guys have some familiarity with each other, do you think that maybe they might make a little push for Barzell? Like, yeah. They're both from the same place, too. I would too. be 100% cool with that. I'm, I'm looking at his stats as we speak. Um, his first full year, 85 points, 63 assists. Since then, though, it's just been down. You know, 60, 62, 45. That was a short season. Yeah. Um, last year, yeah, he played 44 games only, but he got 46 points with 34 assists. So this guy is, man, he's a good playmaker. So he's say, fast. Say, you know, Lou is, he's done. He's like, hey, we got to, 
we got to get Y a new team. We got to rebuild. I'd yeah. be on the phone with Lou the next day. Why, how could we not? Be? And I would sell he's, a little bit of the firm to get a guy like this. He's 26 years old, and he's still, he's, you know, the, the, just plus minus. He's got, yeah, it's plus, he's, plus, a, he's a plus two on a terrible team. Yeah. Well, this year he's got 34 assists in 44 games. That I, I think that's impressive. 46 points in 44 games, that's impressive. So yeah. you're getting a point of game guy, you're getting a guy who passes first no matter what. Uh, that exactly the type of guy that Bedard needs, just like that. And and he knows Bedard, so he already knows how. Very to play interesting. With him. Start the rumor. I you, you know what, dude? We've done this before, man. And we're like we're practiced. I think we're three for three. We're very man. good. We started with we're, Seth we're, when no one listened to us. Right. That was our that was our big with, break. Seth Jones, and that was out of nowhere. That was before anybody was talking about. You know, it. well, I heard rumor of. You know, he wasn't going to resign, and usually that means, hey, most smart GMs, when your you're stud defenseman or your player or whatever is not going to resign, usually they want to move him. And I immediately right. said, the Hawks are going to go for it again with Kane and Taves and, you know, the rest of the core. This is a guy you want. And sure enough, Bowman did it, which I was really impressed with, but... Barzell, his cap hit is nine million right now, um, which I'm okay with. I think uh, that's about right. I'm not sure how many years he has left. Um, I'll look it up. This is his entry level, so oh yeah. I mean, Garth Snow signed him. This guy, another oh uh, one of those other dinosaurs in the league, but. Yeah, let me see. Expiring. St- oh, he's a UFA. Yeah. Oh, so you can get him for free. Wait a minute. No, he's he's on a new contract right here. Sure? Yeah, it starts in uh, 20, 2024, 2025. At 9 mil, 9.1, right? Right, right. And how long? Oh, that goes until uh, 20, 20, 30, 31. <laughs> Wow. Well, it so, can happen. It can happen if you you got the term, but you got to you got to move some, you know, pieces that They're going to want something. Oh yeah, they're going to want a Frank Nazar or you yeah, know, they're going to want somebody are. good and I'm sure a couple picks. Would you give Oliver more for, for as part of the package? Um you know, I I hate to say anything cuz I'd like to see him play. At least a, a season, yeah. but I mean that's the game, you know. Like look at like we always go back to this trade: Joe Newendike for Jerome McGinley. Yep, Dallas got their Stanley Cup, but they lost a 600 goal scorer. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> what do you want? I mean, what yeah. do you want? I mean, I I and that 600 goal scorer never won a never cup. Never won a cup. Uh, Hall of Famer, you know, face of Calgary. Uh, but yeah, no cup. Dallas, Joe Newendike got his second cup there, and he was one of the missing pieces of that team. Their first yeah. Stanley Cup ever. So, I mean, that's the game. If you you can get a guy, Matthew Barzell, to help counter Bedard score 60, 50 goals, and you got to give up Oliver Moore, I think I would go for it. Yeah. Yeah, man, I think that I would, I too. would hate to see I'm Oliver Moore become a Tage Thompson. Yeah. You know, yeah. scoring 40 goals and just yeah. ripping it up. But I mean that's the game like for the Islanders. Another another trade. Ryan O'Reilly for uh Tage Thompson. Buffalo got Tage Thompson. They got a future, you know, top five goal guy. And, you know, St. Louis got that two way center, block shots with his face, score goals, and they won a Stanley Leadership. Cup. So that's yeah. the game. If it leads us to a Stanley Cup, I think uh I would probably pull the trigger on that deal, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not like we're lacking for prospects, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really a tough uh, one. And, but here's the thing: is. you're you're getting him at nine million for yeah. his type of caliber player with term. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'll pull the freaking trigger. I mean, all the all the groundwork's done for you, Davidson. You know, you don't have to do yeah. anything. You you just give him his check. He's gonna get you assists. Uh, I'd yeah. like to see him in a new environment. You know. 
I, I think his numbers, could be, going. his numbers could be even better if he wasn't yeah. with the Islanders. He could be a hundred point guy. I think he would be more. I think he'd be more like a Kucherov player if he had the flexibility of you know having more freedom out there and not worrying about their defensive play. He, right. I think he'd be amazing. I think he'd be top five in points for sure. We're twenty. He's twenty six right with now. a good sidekick. You know, yeah. Like Kucherov's got yeah. Braden Point. He's had Stamkos. He's had all those guys. And look right. at McDavid's got his dry sidle. They, you know, Ovi had his Backstrom. You know, all those guys, they got a good player with them, and he doesn't. Bo Horvat's good, but he's not like, you know, Mitch Marner and Matthews. Right. So I, it's, maybe they're still learning to play together. He had six shots the other night against I, the, I like the Blackhawks. Bo. I like Bo Horvat. He is a very good player. I just don't think he is at the level of, you know, those other guys. I think Barzell is an elite player. It's just, it, it's so weird. It's like... uh what what was that Cubs player back in back in the day? Like this guy was unbelievable, Andre Dawson. Like uh, this guy was unbelievable, and he was just on the Cubs. You know, he wasn't. He just he he couldn't get that team with him to help him. And yeah. uh, I I feel like poor Barzell is that that type of guy. He's, I'm sure he's happy. You know, he's playing hockey for a living, nine million a year, but. It's just I mean, I, over time. It's got to get. It's got to get old. Like, come on, we're 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 winning games two to one. We're lo- we're losing games one nothing. We can't score, you know. And it get yeah. old for me after a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, we'll keep that one on the back burner. What do you, hey, what do you like think? I like it. That's a good rumor to start. <laughs> I, it, I think it's going to be a little harder with the term, but hey, you never know. Who knows, man? Maybe I know that you don't want that to happen. Maybe but Patrick Wild will out. bench him a couple times, and I want out. <laughs> so I want out. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. And that'll be a yeah. nice sense of irony right there. Yeah. Well, all right, everybody. That's all that we got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know who do you think that the Blackhawks should possibly target because they can't sell forever. You know, they're they're, they're they need to build. I think they're getting to that building part of. Um, getting these guys going to get ready for a playoff push within like the next two years. Matt wants it to be, be wants them to win a cup before Connor Bedard starts his next contract. I <laughs> not just don't, gonna happen, but I don't I'd see love that it. happening, no, man. No, but um, five, but five, hey, let six us know. <laughs> five, six yeah, years. I, I, I think, think so. realistically, four, four to five years they could win one. But um, but hey, we'll see. Let us know what you guys think. Who would be a great piece? Uh, that would want to come and play with Connor Bedard. You know, Elias Peterson is still out there, man. You know, I know that you you were talking about the idea of that. So we'll, uh, we'll see. This is the Tomahawk. We're out of here.